Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming out this evening on this very snowy evening. Um, I'm Vic Brooks. I'm curator of time-based visual art here at MPAC. And I'm really thrilled to have Ileana Ramirez Romero here with us today. Uh, we tried to bring her in the spring, but of course, with everything going on in Venezuela, the, with the blackouts, we couldn't get her out of the country at that time. Very lucky to have you here now. So um, this evening, Ileana is going to really kind of give us a little glimpse into um, what's happening um, in, the, in the art scene over there. Um, how artists are working, how organizations are working, and also a little bit of a kind of like backstory to um, what's been happening in terms of like museums and institutions and the kind of centralization of those um, spaces. Um, so Ileana has been, uh, has started this incredible platform called Traffico Visual about a decade ago, um, which was really there at the beginning of, you know, live streaming when like Ustream and things were happening to, um, she saw a real need for um, for folks outside of Venezuela to be able to see what was happening. Of course, there's an incredibly vibrant art community there, and still is, even though, of course, many people have left, uh, sadly. And Ileana will touch a little bit about on that um, from a project she just did in Bogota, which was dealing specifically with um, the question of immigration between uh, Colombia and, um, and Venezuela, um, and the kind of like artistic projects that are coming out around issues of, um, of migration. Um, so alongside her work with Trafico Visual, which is ongoing, um, is also she was working uh, for the foundation, the Cisneros Collection, uh, which has been very active um, in, in Venezuela for many years, but sadly has basically closed its doors um, this summer. And Ileana was working with them as the head of programs, kind of overseeing all of their educational projects, their seminars, their workshops, um, bringing international artists and curators into Caracas, into Venezuela, um, from all over the world to kind of like have these convenings um, around questions of not only um, Venezuelan art, but Latin American art and art of the Americas in general, um, and bringing all these questions to the fore. So this is supposed to be very relaxed. Um, mm -hmm. Feel free to get up and get drinks and food as we go. Feel free also to interject if, you, if you'd like to hear more about one thing or another. Okay. You know, Ileana's going to present, but really, we weren't sure about her standing up to present, but it's good. She's just going to present. And then we will just have a little discussion, really, you know, questions, thoughts. Um, that's it. Welcome, Ileana. Thank, thank you so you. much, and thank you all thank for you. coming. Thank you. Oh, good evening. I don't know. Oh, no, no, it's not on. Just oh, project. Okay. Oh, OK. perfect. Yeah, this is just for documentation. Oh, OK. OK. Oh. So, <laughs> well. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Vic because she was, she's the, the guilty <laughs> that I'm here tonight. Of course, Johannes Goebel. And we had a nice talk this afternoon. And I'm super happy to be here. It's, for me, it's an honor. And on behalf of all the community, the artistic community in Venezuela, this is amazing. And this is a great opportunity to show you a little bit of what is going on in Venezuela, as you said before, you you resume it very, very, very lovely. Uh, please uh, apologize my accent if it gets in the way. <laughs> Feel free to ask any question. As we are a small group, I like it to to make it more relaxed and and more <coughs> and easier. So uh, I'm gonna start. My name is Ileana Ramirez. And um, I'd like to start with this image that represents what was happening last March when I was supposed to come here, but I couldn't. There was a, like a, a blackout, nationwide blackout, uh, after a problem at the hydroelectric company in the state. We don't know yet what happened there. And basically, all the country was in darkness. As you see, there's another image like that, like just a car, light cars, and some of the places that have generators, but basically everything was down. I mean, everything was closed, no school, no hospital, no airport, <laughs> couldn't fly. And after that, the only American airline that was working, that was American Airlines, uh, decided not to work anymore. So to get out of the country, is very difficult, especially if you come into the US. You have to stop somewhere else. I mean, it's 
from there to, uh, to these days, it's been really uh, hard to solve that problem. We still have these power cuts every day. So I'd like to start with this video. This is uh, an artist, Ivan Candeo. He lives in Spain, and his work is based on video art. And I chose this video because I think it's very representative of what we've been doing and what we've, we've been living uh, since, let's say, 20 years after all this, the government decided to, I mean, to, to interpose some ideologies. And, well, I don't need to explain so much. You can see <laughs> on your eyes, but uh, I think that's a very interesting thing, especially because this artist studies and uh, the, what is the image movement and also what is going on when you see it from one point, one spot. So you're not moving, but something else is happening. So she, he is being investigating about that. He has all his videos online, so you can easily look at, look over, and he has more studies about this, uh, like this uh, uh, issue. So, okay, Trafico Visual, that's a part of the story I'm gonna tell uh, this evening. This is my web project. It's a video platform that I created 10 years ago in 2009. And it came out after my concern about the lack of registration, the lack of archives about after all the, the artistic scene that was happening by that time. I mean, performances, conversations, seminars, everything uh, was happening, but nobody was recording it. Nobody was taking uh, any, any account of what was happening, especially because uh, it's been uh, really difficult for the newspapers to survive, and they have been forced to just go online as well. So no more newspapers are available. Sometimes one that it goes out weekly, but it's very, I mean, it's not uh, something that you're gonna find on the street. Not, not because you're going online because it's a trendy thing, but they don't have the resources to do that because you have to pay a lot of money, you have to pay in dollars to get the paper, and the government doesn't uh, give the dollars, and then there's uh, <laughs> an obstacles, so no paper at all. And then I decided, okay, I think it's important to, to keep this memory, to keep this, uh, things that are happening for the next next generations. And um, first, at first, I thought about creating a like a podcast show, but then I thought that it wasn't enough because most of, most of them uh, works are audiovisual. I mean, the image is very important; it's predominant. So it became like a a website. And okay. So in the meantime, I, I was, you know, observing all the changes that was happening on the, like the government and the cultural institution. And I think it's important to give you some context, uh, some historical context of what, what was happening 10 years before I, I created Trafico Visual. Sofia Inver, she passed away a few years ago. She is an icon for, for the cultural society because she was the founder of the Museum of Contemporary Art, which has one of the largest and the most important collections in Latin America. And she worked really hard to build this uh, collection. I mean, the building was created, it's already there, not like this one, that is amazing. But, but the collection is really important. So in that change, 
um, a lot of things were happening progressively. And one of them was that all the museums uh, have to be centralized in one office. There used to be like Museum, museum of Fine Arts, um, or I don't know, like Contemporary Art Museum, or Design uh, Museum. And each one of them had their own decisions about the exhibitions, the resources, the money, everything. He created just one office. And all these logos that you see on the rocks, are, there used to be the logos of one of, of their, the museums. But after that, this is an artwork from Pepe Lopez. He created this logo for all of them. Uh, also relating to uh, like an indigenous uh, symbols. So everything of this was, uh, you know, like just hmm, put it away because they needed to just centralize in one office, which uh, have brought a lot of problems about making decisions, about the money, because it tends to be more like uh, hegemonic uh, decisions on, you know, what kind of, uh, do you, what kind of artists do you like to invite, or he just believed in collective exhibitions and more like popular ones. So I, I like to just to play this video. So I show you uh, how all these structures and the modern architecture has been uh, deteriorated through the years. So most of them, like this one, was supposed to be like a very modern shopping center, and uh, right now it's a political jail. So the political prisoners are there. So the, the transformation of the use of the places uh, is also very, uh, is, is something that you can uh, notice through all these years. How can a, how a society, a country have been changed? So as I was talking about this lady, Sophia Imber, the founder of the Contemporary Museum, I like to brought this image of the artist uh, Erika Ardoscoiti. Uh, this is an intervention she did. Uh, it's not part of the program of the museums. It's just to show, she wanted to show the condition of the, the museum at that moment. Uh, this is like the indoors of the museum. I guess they were repairing something, but she wanted to express like the, her, her discontent about what was happening. You see, it's from 2011. So I, what I'm trying to say is that in the, as I'm creating this website, as I'm making all these uh, the recordings and going to places and talking to people, this is happening. So. Uh, the story about the, you know, the museums happened in 2002, and then uh, all the museums had the, all this new way to work. And in 2009 is when I, I just opened the website and started talking to people, talking to the artists, going to places, and trying to, you know, <laughs> to uh, minimize this uh, sadness. So this is the, the building outside from the Contemporary Art Museum that also very curious is that the name has been changed many times. It used to be like Caracas, <coughs> Sofia Inver, Contemporary Art Museum. Later, it became like Caracas Contemporary Art Museum. They forget about the Sofia Inver, and now they changed to uh, Armando Reverón, Contemporary Museum, and this is very polemic because Armando Reverón, I don't know if you know this important painter, uh, is 
it belongs more to the modern movement. It doesn't have anything to do with the contemporary art, but they decided to put the name on the contemporary uh, art museum. So other images that I wanted to show was the, the how these important buildings were, uh, they were being abandoned, they were being, you know, uh, dismantled like this. Uh, this is a hotel, Hotel Humboldt, uh, that was constructed, that was built on the top of a mountain in Caracas, and is an icon also of a very modern uh, architecture from the 60s. But, you no, know, no, everything is bad. <laughs> There's another part, uh, like a happier part of the story, that there are a lot of artists and people concerned about keeping, you know, the, this scene in, in Venezuela. So this, they decided to open new spaces. So uh, mecenas, I don't know, mecenas or people who have uh, money to support uh, projects open these kind of places like the one on, on your left. Uh, this used to be warehouses. After that, uh, there were like open uh, art, art studios and they became galleries and spaces for like merging artists. So you go there and it's like you can, you can walk around and there's a coffee shop and there's a library, uh, there's a bookstore and there are galleries. Also, this space is like an artist room space. And the other one too, there's sometimes there are just houses, artist houses, curator houses, or, you know, I, um, or like this one, that is in a very, like, a little town in Caracas. So they decided to open uh, new, new spaces for new projects. The same here, like the other, other places. So this is like a dancer to what was happening from since uh, the, the last decades. So with Trafico Visual, um, I started uploading all the, this information in reviews, news, um, videos, podcasts, and I get interviews, essays, collaborations from different authors. I started uploading all the, some of the archives there. Some of them were live stream because something that I started doing is that in 2009, um, I didn't want to just, you know, open a blog and just upload a review or something. I wanted to make it more alive. So I, I found this application on the internet that you could do a live stream, a very basic. So I would go to these places with my camera, my tripod, and try, you know, like a very, uh, in a very precarious way, <laughs> to try to, to get the, the live stream. And people uh, started liking this, this way of communicating new, uh, the, the art, the visual arts. So they asked me to go to their shows, to go to their talks and record all of that. So people started, started talk, calling me Trafico instead of my name. They started knowing me as Trafico Visual. They didn't know who I was. Um, I must say that I always been working on the cultural, also cultural administration. First, I work at the Los Galpones. After that, I work uh, in Colección Cisneros, as you said. So I always share my time in a, like a formal job and also with my formal passion that is the, the website, this project. So this photo is a, like an anecdotic thing because the first streaming that I, that I, that I tried was with Martin Parr in, 
in a room in Los Galpones. Mm -hmm. And I also asking, please, would you say hi to Trafico Visual? You know, thinking about like a very important channel. <laughs> and he was doing a very important conference. This is the microphone that I used to for the, I plug in the computer and I try. So all of, most of them are uploaded in YouTube, Vimeo, etc. Most of them are in hard drive and <laughs> USB drive and <laughs> not CDs yet. <laughs> so here's me with a very, with a <laughs> very, very preoccupied about the I started using, you know, because back in 2009, we didn't have any, any Facebook Live, any Instagram Live. Now, right now, everybody can do it. So I started using more like the apps and social media. This was in a very, in a, in a bookstore that became uh, like a cultural center because that happened there. Like tiny, tiny places became like a, you know, like a, the center for, for a, for a, um, a nice artistic community. Here uh, that I like to mention is uh, another. Uh, there's a group of artists that they are called the Marginal Historiography of Venezuelan Art, something like that. They they are all artists. He's from Austria, but he's been living for forever there. Um, but these young artists, the youngest. Uh, they were concerned about what was happening with the historiography of Venezuela because sometimes, you know, the official, the official uh, history of a place is about, you know, power or something that they are more interested in. And they noted that some artists of some events were just left out. So they started doing this kind of punk uh, concert and wrote in, writing letters about the story of these artists that had to be uh, mentioned. So they started doing this in different, different galleries, different spaces. Right now, they just have a, you know, a long play, a, like a vinyl. Vinyl? Vinyl? Yeah. And people went there, and, you know, very happy. And, <laughs> and this is their kind of a fun scene or lyrics that they wrote to. This is a critique, an art critique. A very, uh, quite important there. So with Trafico Visual also, we did like um, workshops, curatorial workshops. So I got more involved, not only just doing recordings and streamings, but participating more uh, on the on the scene and about what was being discussed, so I participated in a workshop that I use, I would record all the sessions from dif different artists and then upload them and you can could see all the process until the exhibition was ready. And we would invite uh, different experts to to talk about the. the of different topics. So in, at this moment, as I told you that I share my time between Trafico Visual and other, other kind of jobs, uh, briefly, I, I like to mention the Fundación Cisneros and Patricia Ferde Cisneros collection <laughs> uh, has been very important for Venezuela in building all the like uh, collections of Latin American art, as you see, they recently opened a department in MoMA, the Latin American Studies Department. Also, they have donated a massive um, amount of um, pieces to different different museums. Um, Patricia Phelps de Cisneros, uh, she would be a, a collector, I don't know, since she was very young. And she started collecting modern art, geometry, ab abstract art, especially from Latin America. But she was, um, she fo focused in, you know, 
to create of the um, Latin American art, not just a cat category or a label, but that this kind of art could dialogue with different different arts in in the world. So uh, the the pieces are everywhere in the world, and not just to be like this is a Latin American art, but they are perfectly talking and dialoguing with different artists. So my, my, my responsibility where, when I was working there was to organize educational programs like the international seminar, discussions, uh, talks, especially with young artists or emerging artists. So this is Sofia Hernandez Chuncuy. And she would organize the international seminar for seven years. She would go to Venezuela twice a year and you know, prepare for this big event that would change the way we thought of uh, modern uh, contemporary art in Venezuela because she would invite international curators, international artists. So we got the opportunity you know, to have access to all the the topics that are being uh, uh, mentioned in the world. Then she, I had the, the responsibility to organize the seminar last uh, two years ago. And the topic I chose was about politics because of the, you know, the moment that we are go going through. And it was a very, very enlightening experience for me to learn more about the, what was uh, going on in different part of the, we invite people from uh, Argentina, from Guatemala, from Brazil, uh, so to exchange point of view about politics and not only politics and the society, but politics in the arts. And also we got some performance and discussions. So, as uh, Vic mentioned, they, they closed operations last summer, and they keep doing activity here for the MoMA uh, on the website. We still have some projects project left, but in Venezuela they just stopped working because I don't know because it's a it's a difficult moment for them. So. I, I wanted to bring also this image because in Venezuela, not also the political situation is complicated, but we're living through a violent uh, society. It's not safe. I mean, we got a lot of problems around. And what is important to say is that the artists are dedicated more talking about what they're living, what they're experiencing. Because maybe in the 60s, uh, there were more on the modern art, on the geometry, you know, the cinetic uh, effects. But right now, they're more like living the tangible uh, problems. So Teresa Mulet uh, expressed on, on these drawings, like there are more that people, you know, each time, and then becomes just no names, no, 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 just, just like a something there. And the same happens with Amada Granado, another photographer and artist. She tried to reflect some realities in, in Venezuela, like uh, the situation in jails, that some people, they are a prisoner, he is a convict, and he is the leader, and he has a pool, and he's, you know, is a, is a crazy thing that is, it happens there in Venezuela. So the artists just want to, you know, to put out. Maybe you don't see those uh, things in news, but maybe through the, the work you can quite understand what is happening. So this guy would invite his friends and relatives to have a weekend, like a social club. This is the prison? Yeah, yeah, this is a prison <laughs> in Margarita Island. So she uh, went there, Amada, as a journalist, 
to these guys. Uh, and this is the pool, and the guy, the guy uh, is, the guy passed away. I don't know. He was killed, and his nickname was El Conejo, like the rabbit, and that's why it's uh, the Playboy <laughs> thing there. So this is the artist uh, Amada. And also here, like the architecture, you see, he used to be, I mean, he was supposed to be one of the tallest uh, buildings in the city. In this, um, the bank that financed this building went um, bankrupt, and the, it didn't finish at all. So people started invading the, the building, and we had like the, you know, the this uh, the structure there. So like, very violent moments came in 2014, 2017. Can you talk just about that building again? Because you were telling me yesterday that actually there was artists also. I mean, the community was built there and living there, but also artists set up spaces um, within the building as well, right? Well, the, these uh, artists, Angela Buenadiz yeah. and Juan Jose Lavarria, I started taking photographs around the, the building. And then they had the opportunity to get in the building after a lot of uh, process, because the leader of the building uh, have like a, had a, like a, some rules to get in. So when they were allowed to, to go to the building, they just capture uh, with, in images the kind of life they had inside, like a little town with uh, a little bank, with uh, like a grocery store. And yeah, they could eat. Did you see here their little windows that they started putting bricks, like little houses? Mm -hmm. And then they also they broke the, the glasses, which was very, very dangerous for the people around. There's another important, this is this tower. The architect is the same that built this, this building. And this belongs to a, a bank, Mercantil. So people work there, and oh, everything was happening there. You can see Chavez, Amaduro, Chavez Vive, and, and so it was not safe around there. Not even for the people living in there, because as you can see, no elevators were there. They have to either go by bike until a certain point of the building, and then walk, you know, and on the stairs. So, go by bike. Mm, because there were uh, like a parking thing around here on the, on the bottom, mm -hmm. so people, also, they charge you. It's like like a taxi, like a bike, taxi, bike, taxi. I don't know. There is, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see it? It's very popular because the traffic is really bad. So you pay for a, a bike, bike driver, I don't know, to yeah. take you somewhere. So they would charge you if you wanted to go to the top, uh, like a service, because it's really tall also. Also here, you could see like uh, the march of the opposition on the highway. And I wanted to put in contrast with this image of Amada Granado. I forgot to, to, to put the name. She's the same that you know took the photograph at the jail. So because always this river has been part of the propaganda for the new mayor of the city that we're going to get it, you know, better, we're going to get rid of the pollution. So it's like imagining or fan it's a fantasy of a calm river that you can go and, and you know, spend the day there. Contrast with this. So after this happened, a lot of artists try to express uh, in a creative way that they were, you know, really really mad about what was happening, but not being <coughs> violent like this, you know, so be more, be more peaceful. 
and give some solution after those, uh, those moments. The same here, where uh, some artists went to an official office and say we got off the got out of the river wide clean uh, with our conscious clean <laughs> because the government said that ah oh, these people went to the river okay contaminated these people belong to the river trying to say you know something like that <laughs> so in the meantime it's very you can see very like violent images and suddenly you can see these kind of events right this happens in a country like Venezuela because it's very paradoxical that there's people try to make, you know, to, to have a life. And I don't know, as you live in Germany, you live in Germany, and I don't know, maybe people from the uh, democratic uh, Germany can tell you about this. Like, Maybe if you're in war or anything, uh, I mean, you need to live, you need to make your life, you need to find a window of possibilities of, and hope. So these places keep alive with people that are trying to make new projects, to not to, to stop. That's the same with these places, like artist-run spaces that they have residencies and they get together. These are all just, I mean, public and artists that get together to work and they use their houses, they use their, their places to, you know, to just to create new ideas. But also there are other institutions more formal, like Sala Mendoza, that has a very long tradition of uh, in contemporary art is, I think, like 60 years old. It's pretty long. Or oh, either these spaces that keep open in spite of everything. Also, this concept as uh, the other one I showed you before. This is a farm that was uh, changed and recycled as a place to for for the arts for culture this is a place for uh, used to be a farm of coffee uh, and tobacco and now it's a place for artistic projects and also I don't know like chocolate the chocolate thing that I <laughs> I showed some people this morning is because there's a movement about chocolate, the, the Venezuelan chocolate from bean to bar and everything. So those buildings works for, for these kind of activities. The same with heavy head arts. These places I'm showing are located in Caracas, where, but there are other cities in Venezuela that also have some activity. Sadly, with the power cuts, uh, a lot of people are moving to Caracas because they don't find any gas or electricity or water. So Caracas uh, is being kept as a jewel for, you know, like they try to keep it in better condition compared to the rest of the, the country. So this Erika, <laughs> the same that was naked in the museum, shows here Ambre hunger to to express also the problem of the lack of essential uh, food, medicine. So it's a, it's something that you're gonna see throughout the years that all the young artists are talking about social problems. Not all of them, but it's a, a very it's a consistent thing. Also this. This is the National Assembly uh, building. It's like how it's breaking down everything. And also this one, well, this is pretty old, 1996, before the revolution. And, you know, like the representing the violence. This is the city, this is uh, the city of Caracas. This is from a postcard, I think, and he intervened the, the 
This is like a bleeding Caracas or something like that. Also, this artist, Gerardo Rojas, represented like massive architecture. I don't know if you can remember this. Uh, the architecture of these buildings is Carlos Raúl Villanueva. Uh, he's the architect of uh, Central University, which is a cultural heritage in the world. And he found out uh, of what we call like the, the um, Venezuelan modern architecture. And from the Bauhaus and of the massive, uh, you know, the residences, he built these, um, these uh, apartments. This is, um, this is not for real, of course. This is just like a metaphorical thing, <laughs> overlapping the images. But they are huge. And right now, it's a popular, like a shanty town area. And they just kept the colors that used to be. So here, Luis Poleo also represents like, you know, like how the, these heroes have been used for, for, you know, for ideologies. And there are like statements that we don't, maybe we don't believe anymore because <laughs> we need a change. And it's like a kind of, of a joke of that. And also, we we're getting to the, the sad part, <laughs> and maybe the, the last part. Uh, am I doing good with the time? Do I have to? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm about to finish, anyway. So here, Pepe Lopez, uh, the same with the logos and the rocks. He did this big installation uh, called Escape Room, and where he reflects there. And the situation that Venezuela is living right now. Since, I don't know, since maybe 2014, it's getting more intense. So he took things from his, his house. He, he lives in France. He doesn't live in Venezuela, but he travels all the time. And just he wrapped everything in plastic. As you can see, all the, you know, the things, he decided to go. And that's something that is happening to a lot of people. Over 0.5 million of people, according to the ACNUR organization, the nation, the, I don't remember the name, in the refugees organization, uh, they have counted over 0.5 million people have left the country. Sometimes they don't have anything. I mean, they just leave uh, because of the lack of medicine, the lack of, I don't know, essential or basic uh, products, or they don't have a job, they don't have a, a way to maintain themselves, so they just decide. But it's not just like, like a, a uh, certain class of people live is anywhere. Um, I mean, anybody is uh, deciding to, to live. This is the artist. Because the, here there was a spot that you also could take like a selfie thing. So the same with this artist, Marie Licole. Marie Licole, she is a photographer, but also she works for the people who decide to leave their houses and they want to let also just to sell their stuff. So they just set them all and make like sale market. But she just put the attention on certain things and started taking photograph as a memory, a souvenir of what kind of life these people had before, like parties, like. And she would go to uh, like upper class houses, trying to say that the situation of the diaspora is uh, 
it doesn't matter about what social class you belong. It, it's a, the problem is everywhere. So it's the same. Like this. So this also tells you about abandoned places, like isolation, like there's a, sometimes there's a feeling in the, I don't know, in the city that it's like nobody is oh. <laughs> out. Like, where is everybody? But I guess it's more like because every, I mean, a lot of people is leaving. Every week you have to say goodbye to somebody. There's a lot of farewell parties. <laughs> and you have the feeling that you're getting alone. I mean, yeah, alone. Also here, the Juan Jose Lavarria has this drawings. It's a series of drawings about people making lines to get products or also getting to the border and just running away. And here, Su Won Lee. Uh, she is from Venezuela, but her parents are from Korea. Right now, she's living in Korea. And she always said, no, I feel very Venezuelan, but the, the stranger says is the name. And this is, I mean, this is the image that says everything about what is, what is going on. Also, Esperanza Mayobre, she is a, She's Venezuela and lives in New York. And when she moved, she started feeling all the, you know, like when you decide to go to somewhere else and you don't belong there. And you know how to, to justify yourself why you moved. She moved to New York way before, every, I mean, all the, all the problems got worse, so. But for her, it's been hard to adjust and to feel, you know, all the time you feel immigrant, you feel different. And here, in this, uh, in this video also, Alicia Caldera, uh, would, she lived in Mi Bogotá. Mi nombre es Alicia Caldera, soy artista uh, fotógrafa venezolana. En este momento okay. vivo en Madrid, pero... Seco. Okay, thank you, <laughs> I'm sorry. She lived in Colombia for seven years. Now she moved to, to, she moved to. Madrid, she said. Uh -huh, to Madrid, thank you, <laughs> you understand. And, but she, she's from Maracaibo, uh, the west of, the northwest in, in Caracas, um, in Venezuela. So she crossed the border every time. From, Bo from Colombia to Venezuela. So she le saw all the process of the migration of people uh, crossing the border. And through the years, she got more concerned about, you know, like uh, the, how these people started going more, more living, leaving the country, leaving the country. And she, did this uh, book, it's like three books, like a booklet, uh, yellow, blue, and red with the <laughs> Venezuelan flag colors. And she divided the, the work. So she put in some, in a booklet, like intimate images of people that left the country. She went to their apartments, their places, and see through their eyes the sadness of having to leave your family, your place, your, your environment. And then she, the other, and the other book, she represented the landscape of, you know, these areas, these big, massive areas that are just divided by a border. But we're pretty much the same. <laughs> and also the trails that people would take to cross the border. And in the other book, she put like more in a abstract way, the images of the people trying to cross the border, 
because the, border, the, Colum the Venezuelan border and with Colombia was closed for, for a year, I think. And the day they opened the border was <laughs> a crazy, crazy thing. So she did this. It's a very touching, I mean, the, the whole work because she put attention on the feeling of the people that had to live and uh, they had to, to leave everything. So here are more parts of the book, like, you know, the division, the fragmentation of the, the people, and you have to live with a frag, you know, like a, like a broken, <laughs> a broken heart all the time. So for Venezuela, this, this is a totally new thing because we were more like uh, a country for receiving people, for receiving immigrants. That was our tradition from Europeans, from other uh, South American people. And right now is the opposite. So we're going through this pain. Maybe in the United States it's totally different and other countries, but for Venezuela is something that we're still experiencing, my family, and, and we always wake up. I live in Venezuela and I, every time I wake up in the morning, it's like, am I doing the right thing? Should I move? Should I stay? Um, so f the diaspora and the migration uh, problem is something that we have to process and we will see it in years. To, you understand uh, this, uh, this bad situation. So talking about that, Colombia, and this is the, uh, the, the last part, Venezuela and Colombia, I was invited recently to participate at the Colombian National Artist Exhibition uh, with Trafico Visual. And what I did was to create a, a program of uh, seminars and talks and screening for to show what the artists are were doing in video and performance. So I created this program called Crossing the Line, meaning that crossing the line from the digital to the you know to uh, a community and also the border of the. So I created this little campaign of what would and what consisted the, the project, what was the date. So we include a lot of video art from the 60s, from different formats. I ask also uh, other organizations, other artistic collective that works on video art to create create little like little series of videos to present each day and uh, so we had this uh, activity over 5 weeks there in Bogota at the <coughs> very nice building la cinemateca so we would screen these uh, movies, these films. Also, we had uh, conversations with our Venezuelan artists that are living in Bogota. Also, Colombian people are interested in the binational uh, tension between Colombia and Bogota. Also, we had these workshops trying to, in this case, to create their own maps after they cross the border, you know, you try to create your home. Uh, you have your memories, what you left, but you have to start over. So these, these people started suing their own maps. It was supposed to be Venezuela and Colombian map, but they created their own. So this is uh, Caracas <laughs> like in the morning and I put this image in the beginning, now I, I change it to the end, 
trying to find, you know, a new beginning of everything, trying to be optimistic for a change and to that the artists have uh, more options uh, either in Venezuela or in, in the world. This is, I had a video that I, should I show it? Is it a two minute video? From there. Mm -hmm. All right. Qué placer cuando uno puede anunciar un cigarrillo usando dos palabras solamente. Voy a tocar su puerta, tocar el timbre, su ventana también. Yo me aseo con el limpiado de cositas más, que desmancha más, que desinfecta más, que limpia más y no daña. Quien te pasa el cheque por nariz manda, ¿verdad? O te quita el cheque. Muérete que chao. Viaza, la línea aérea de Venezuela. So, should I, yeah, yeah the, this, uh, this video, uh, as you saw, are the soundtracks that we grew up with. I mean, there were like the traditional jingles of different products. I don't know if you could understand a little bit of Venezuela, Caracas, of, I don't know, the airline, or, I don't know, an ice cream, or something that we, we would go and eat. So she said that was or it was something that happened and it's not, and this is the feeling of the city, like it's, it's getting empty and blank, just waiting for a new, new opportunity. So I think is all I can say for tonight. I hope that you understood a little bit. I'm sorry about my <laughs> broken English, <laughs> but I, most of these artists can be seen in the internet. I'd invite you to, to look at them and also check the, the Trafico Visual website that is, uh, is open for all of you. I don't know if you have uh, any questions or... Thank you.